Hello, I'm Lucy from the Folk Forecast, and I'm here with Matthew Bannister from the fantastic Folk on Foot podcast. Um, at the moment, he's getting ready for the fourth Folk on Foot festival, the Folk on Foot Festival of Love, which will be held on Valentine's Day. So I thought I'd get him here to tell us all about it. Hi, Matthew. How are you? It's wonderful to see you. I'm, I'm very well, very busy, as you might imagine, uh, <laughs> getting ready for the festival uh, with lots of artists sending in films of their sets at the moment so I'm just going through it's a really you know it's not not too onerous a job it's a really lovely job just uh going through all these amazing love songs that people are sending me <laughs> sounds quite busy but good um so firstly I'd like to talk a little bit about the podcast um I think a lot of my viewers are going to be familiar with Faux Comfort already but for anyone who isn't um could you tell us a little bit about what the podcast is all about Yes, the podcast is something that brings together my three passions in life, which are folk music, walking and telling stories in sound. And we started in 2018 and I had this idea that folk music is really rooted in the place that it comes from. Um, and so I started getting in touch with folk artists and asking them if they'd like to go for a walk in the landscape that had inspired their music and play and sing on location. And I'm delighted to say that uh, 50 plus episodes later, we're still at it. And we've been all over the UK. We've been right up as far north as Sandwood Bay, right near to Cape Roth in the north of Scotland with Duncan Chisholm, the fiddle player, and as far south as Port Isaac in Cornwall, where we went with the Fisherman's Friends, and Devon, where we went with Seth Lakeman. And we've been to Northern Ireland with Cara Dillon. Uh, we've been to Oxford with Peggy Seeger, all sorts of parts of the UK, the Peak District with Bella Hardy. And we go walking and the artists sing and play on, on location. And it, it makes a real difference to the way the music sounds. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you get to find out a lot about the artists as well. So um, even as someone who's always been a big fan of folk music and even with artists that I feel like I know quite well, um, I listen to folk on foot and I find out something new about them. Well, part of the joy for me is learning about um, the artists' um, lives, you know, and it's not just about, you know, we're not just musicologists. I, I'm interested in human beings. And so I, I tend to get down and ask them about how their musical journey began and what their childhoods were like and how they first learned their instruments and what brought them to folk music. And so, yes, it, it's revealing about them. And I think because we go for a walk and because we spend quite a long time with the artists, we get a much more intimate conversation and a much more relaxed and open conversation than you would get, for example, if you were doing it in a in a radio studio. So I, I think when, when people walk together and they walk side by side, because you don't have to make eye contact it means that you you feel more relaxed and uh, and you tend to give more of yourself when you're having that kind of conversation yeah and I suppose they always pick somewhere that they feel quite comfortable as well if it's somewhere that inspires them or somewhere they grew up or something like that exactly and I mean obviously I've talked about some of the spectacular locations but I mean we've been to some perhaps less uh, famously beautiful places. We went to the Hartlepool Headland with the Younguns, um, which is a historic part of Hartlepool. We've been to Scunthorpe with Martin Simpson. Um, we've been down the Holloway Road with Frank Turner and on the Hackney Marshes with Johnny Flynn. So we, we, we've been in cities as well as in the countryside. And, uh, and, and as you say, the unifying thing about all those locations is that they mean something really personal to the artist. I mean, Martin Simpson, go back to his childhood home in Scunthorpe, was just extraordinarily emotional. We got into the back garden because the neighbours had a, a, a key and we went into the back garden where he used to climb an apple tree as a, a young boy. And he sang a song about the uh, maps that he found in the garage next door uh, to his parents' home. And uh, it was genuinely very moving to hear him do that in, in the back garden of his, of his childhood home. That's incredible. Uh, and then last year you started doing the, um, the Folk on Foot festivals. So how did they come about? Well, that was just a response to the lockdown. And I'll tell you how it happened. It was, um, we, we did an event at King's Place in London with Eliza Carthy, with um, uh, Nancy Kerr and James Fagan, and with Martin Simpson um, on, on the weekend of March the 14th, which was just the weekend before the first lockdown happened on the 23rd of March. And we knew that it was coming and you could see the fear and the worry and the concern in their eyes as they discussed what was going to happen to their tours and their gigs and their livelihoods uh, once the lockdown happened. And, and I began to think, well, what could we do 
to help at Folk on Foot. And, and I came up with this idea of a front room festival where the artists would record themselves in their front rooms and people would watch it locked down in their front rooms and we would all come together as a community. And that first one on, on Easter Monday, April the 13th, was just such a an extraordinarily emotional experience. And it raised over £110,000. And half of that went to the charity Help Musicians, which was amazingly quick off the... Uh, off the mark, giving out emergency grants to musicians who got themselves into financial difficulties because their gigs are being cancelled. And the other half was divided between the artists who again had no uh, prospect at that stage of any income coming in. So yeah, it was a it was a response to that. And then we did it again and uh, raised over £80,000. And we did it again and raised over £54,000. And again, we divided it between the charity and the artists involved. And uh, the listeners have just been wonderful. The kind of response that we've had from them on social media has just just blown me away. So in, in total, it was almost a quarter of a million pounds. Is that right? Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, which is a real achievement. And I have to say that the need is still very acute, you know, because there's no prospect as we speak of venues reopening um, and um, se several, uh, you know, uh, quite a high percentage of musicians have fallen through the gaps of government support. Um, and, uh, you know, although people have been very imaginative on digital gigs and things like that, there are still a lot of musicians who are struggling out there. And that's why we decided to do another festival on Valentine's Day. And this one's a festival of love, um, love for the musicians. And if you can donate at uh, folkonfoot.com forward slash festival, that would be fantastic and show your love for the musicians who will be singing love songs to you, but also love for each other in these dreadfully grim times and a chance to create a virtual hug, a virtual holding of hands on Valentine's Day afternoon at 2 p.m. Yeah, and you're asking people to leave a message for loved ones as well as the donation, aren't you? I think that would be wonderful if people would donate in the name of love um, and, and leave a message for somebody. It doesn't have to be romantic love. It could be a love for a parent or a child. It could be love for somebody in your community or a friend or a family member, Wh whatever is uh, in your heart at this time, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking so much about my uh, children uh, who I haven't seen for ages, my grandchildren who I haven't seen for ages, who are all under four years old. In fact, my my latest grandchild is only a, a few months old and I've only met him once in the in the freezing cold garden of a pub. So I'm thinking of little Rufus, um, who I've seen a lot on Zoom and FaceTime. But, you know, it's things like that at the moment. And I think if people would make a donation, show their love for the musicians, but also take the opportunity to pay tribute to someone they love, then we can all see uh, these people that we care about. And again, I think it'll create a wonderful sense of community. Definitely. And so who are the artists that you've got lined up? Yeah, let me get my list. I've got a list <laughs> here There, because there are 28 people, 24 different sets, because some of them are duos, but there are 28 people taking part. Shall I read you the whole list? Do you want me to do that? Uh, well, I've got Bella Hardy. We've got Beth Porter in the bookshop band. We've got The Breath. We've got Chris Wood, we've got Eliza Carthy, we've got Gwilym Bowen Rees, we've got Heidi Talbot, we've got John Bowden, we've got Kareen Polwart, Kerry Andrew, You Are Wolf, Kitty McFarlane, Chris Drever, Lady Nade, uh, Lisa Knapp and Jerry Diver, Martin Simpson, Nancy Kerr and James Fagan, Julian Tito, Peggy Seeger, Rachel Newton, Sam Lee, Seku Keita, Seth Lakeman and Steve Knightley. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> Not bad. I mean, I don't think you could cram many more in. <laughs> it's going to take over six hours for this to happen. And each of them is going to do three love songs. They're going to do a traditional love song, an original love song, and a cover version of somebody else's love song. So The Breath are going to sing Bob Dylan. Uh, Steve Knightley is going to sing Dire Straits. Uh, John Bowden's going to sing Whitney Houston. I can't wait for that. And the list goes on and on. People are covering songs that you know you'll you'll recognise famous love songs as well as singing their own love songs and singing some traditional love songs and some really interesting choices there too. Fantastic. Um, so I've put the same question to you. Um, I've asked you to pick a traditional love song, an original, and um, a cover. So what have you chosen? Well. Uh, I, one of the ones that's right at the top of my mind at the moment is uh, The Moon Shines Bright from Sam Lee's 
incredible album, Old Wow. Um, and uh, I love this version, and it includes Elizabeth Fraser from the Cocteau Twins singing uh, what I know as Blooming Heather, uh, Will You Go, Lassie Go, as a counterpoint to this uh, traditional Moonshine's Bright. And it's so beautifully uh, done by Sam Lee and so uh, such an original version uh, that I thought I'd choose that as my traditional song. And then in terms of an original song, um, I've got a, a huge soft spot for the work of John Smith. And we had a great time uh, when we walked together in Brixham in Devon, where John was brought up. And he played um, a song for us on the cliff. It was a really beautiful day. Um, in fact, we, we all we, we thought it was going to rain when we went out. But in fact, the sun came out and we all got sunburned and we all went bright red as we were on top of this cliff in the bright sunshine with the ocean spreading away uh, into the distance. And he sang what is one of my favorite uh, songs of his is called Save My Life. It's not a particularly upbeat uh, message necessarily. I think it's about unrequited love or failed love, but it's nonetheless a beautiful song. So so I chose that one. And then uh, I chose a song that's very dear to my heart uh, by Heidi Tolbert uh, called If You Stay uh, from her album In Love and Light. And Heidi's taking part in the uh, in the front room, in the in the Folk on Foot uh, Festival of Love, um, and this is a song that my partner Kate and I listened to a lot when we were first getting together uh, in 2012, um, and so it means a lot to both of us. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous song. So that's why I've chosen them. What about you? Have you got three? I have. Um, I've picked some unusual ones because the Folk on Foot Festival isn't just about romantic love; it's about sort of all aspects of love. Uh, so I've tried to pick some different ones. Um, so my traditional one, I've gone for Father's Lullaby by Lady Maisry. And it's a song really, it sort of tracks a relationship between two people from when they meet to when they get married, to when they find out that they're having a baby. Uh, but it has a really heartbreaking end um, because the mother dies and, and so the her life is traded for the child's life and ultimately um, it'll end up that the father will probably have to give the child to the foundling hospital which is what inspired um, Hazel to from Lady Maisry to do uh, this song. Um, so it's, it, um, it's a song about parental love as well as um, the love between two people and tracking the relationship that they had. It is one of the issues for the festival that quite a lot of uh, traditional folk songs can be quite sad or quite brutal uh, at times. And so you will hear some quite interesting takes on love during the during the Festival of Love, because, uh, you know, the traditional songs are not straightforward in their in their romantic entanglements, are they? No, definitely not. And I think I have a bit of a tendency to like those kind of um, the bittersweet songs as well. I don't listen to very much that's cheerful. <laughs> so. <laughs> probably got to have at least a little bit of heartbreak and death for it to constitute folk music really <laughs> so um for my original one I've gone for um David Rothery and Eliza Carthy's Maggie's song um which is from an album called Answer Ballads which I reviewed for Bright Young Folk back in the day and that's kind of how I came across it uh so it's basically it's it's an album of songs where figures from well-known ballads get the chance to give their response. And so this one, Maggie's song, it's um, Rod Stewart's Maggie May gets to give her answer to how she sees the world, really. Um, and so David Rothery, he's from the beautiful South, so he knows a thing or two about love songs. And he worked with Eliza Carthy um, to, on putting this together. And um, um, so it's just a way for Maggie to sort of say, you've judged me wrong. and um, this is what I'm really like. What about your cover version? Yeah, so for my cover one, I've gone for Everything Possible by Fred Small, covered by Roy Bailey. And it's a song that I grew up, grew up with, really. Um, but it's on a, an album that Roy Bailey did for children called Why Does It Have To Be Me? Uh, and it's a song about how um, it's sort of a lullaby to a child telling them that whoever you grow up to be, I'll still love you. Uh, and it says, um, some women love women, some men love men, some have children, some never do. And it's sort of saying everyone can do different things in life and um, 
But the important thing is the love that you leave behind at the end of the day. And just saying that whoever you are, you deserve to be loved. I think you're going to find that Martin Simpson is going to sing that in the Festival of Love, uh, which will be a really em emotional moment um, as Roy's uh, son-in-law uh, singing that song. Oh, wow. That sounds really special. So I've definitely picked a good one there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Well, it all sounds fantastic and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, thank you for coming and telling me all about it. So um, where can people watch it on the day and how can they donate to the fundraiser? All the details are at uh, folkonfoot.com forward slash festival, where you can also make a donation. And on the day, it's going to be on the Folk on Foot YouTube channel and on the Folk on Foot Facebook page. And it starts at 2 p.m. GMT, and it's going to run for more than six hours. So lay, lay in some snacks, some drinks, some somebody you love, if possible, if, if they're with you. If not, uh, some sort of device that you can connect with people via as well. And uh, it's just going to be a, a, an amazing day. And if you can make a donation, we'd be very, very grateful. So that web address again is folkonfort.com forward slash festival.